Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jambox. We're here. We're back at it again, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And with that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Organic herbs and botanicals, skin care and edibles, wellness for body and mind. The Brothers Apothecary. Fine teas and remedies. Ronald Records. From indie gems to classic hits, discover the heart of local music. With live shows all the time, up close and personal, and regular releases on their in house label. Ronald Records. Supporting the community, one track at a time. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, shout out the Brothers Apothecary and Ronald Records. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. Guarantee you're going to like them. With that being said, let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. What's up, y'all? My name is Moody Pax. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Give us that like Tinder profile of your involvement with music. Yeah. Um. So like I said, I'm Moody Pax. Um, I make music. I rap. I do a lot of videography. I do a lot of sound work. I'm kind of everywhere with it, honestly. Um, I do have most of my um, work in music, mm -hmm. but I'm starting to really like get back into like the technical side of what it is that I used to do. Okay, hell yeah. Well, uh, we're going to focus on the music for you for a little bit. Uh, what got you into it initially? Well, I mean, honestly, when I was, I want to say 15 or 14, mm -hmm. I was only supposed to be an ad lib on somebody's song. Oh, Literally, okay. like we were, um, it was a guy my mom was talking to and he made music, he rapped mm -hmm. and he, he turned my room into a studio. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I didn't necessarily have anywhere to go. It's, it's, he was just like, you're not using room. it. Yeah, <laughs> I just slept in the living room. And so one day um, he's working on a song with his daughters and I'm just like, yo, what are y'all doing? Like, I'm interested. And they're yeah. like sounding all good and stuff. And I said, well, hey, can, can, yeah, can, can I, I do it? it? Yeah, like, can I do something? What can I do? And he was just like, well, you can you can ad lib. You sound like you would be a good ad lib or whatever. So I'm in there and I'm like kind of ad libbing all their verses or whatever. I'm just like, this is, I'm a, I'm a kid. I don't know yeah. what feels right or what sounds <laughs> right. I'm just like, yeah, I'm about to be on a song. And then he hears you and he goes, hey, you two can get out of here. He's crushing. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it kind of it, it happened more like um, he was just like, oh, well, I feel like I feel like you need to be doing more. So like. He was just like, you want to write a verse? And I was like, I've never written a verse before. I'm not a rapper. Hmm. <laughs> I'm like 14, 15 years old. Like, yeah. I've never like what would my bars done? be about? Yeah. <laughs> and so like, I, I used to do a lot of poetry too. So I, mm. I was just like, I mean, I, I have like poems you could take. And he actually, I, I was, my first verse was actually ghost written. Mm, okay. Okay. Oh, boyfriend. So the exclusive <laughs> information on this one. And so it was just like, I don't know. It was just like an experience that I, I felt like I really enjoyed. And I feel like it was something I felt like I could continue because I don't know, being on the microphone and being able to express whatever it is that I expressed, even though it, it wasn't entirely all of my lyrics, but it was the concept mm -hmm. of what I brought him. Yeah. Inspired whatever it is. So mm -hmm. that was just kind of like the earliest memory that I have with music. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of, you kind of went from like toe dip to head first all in like the same <laughs> instance. Yeah. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Honestly, it was just like a spur of the moment. They're like, Oh, you rapping and the beats on. And I'm just like, Whoa, let yeah, me, I mean, might as well. Something like, <laughs> yeah. uh, where, where his two daughters like older than you was like, yeah. okay. So yeah. Like, they were both older than me. And then, um, on top of that, my mom had made a song around that time too. She's not a rapper. okay. She's not a rapper. Yeah, now. like she's just the mom. <laughs> you, know, you were just you were surrounded by like a ton of music like inside of your house. Yeah, I, was he good at it? Like, 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 did he like have chops or like knowledge as well? Uh, he had he had like a fair good amount of like 
good sound, especially for like like where we were, Houston, Texas. Mm-hmm. You know, it really just kind of embodied just like that South Side yeah. kind of like. Um, I don't um imagine imagine because you know I'm from Houston, Texas. So yeah. imagine like the South Side like oldie trap music. Thinking of like mm-hmm. um, we used to listen to um uh who, who would I say zero. Mm-hmm. He kind of kind of closest to zero, which is a very famous Texas artist who's like you could tell they're southern. You can tell that the, that yeah uh, their their way of living is trying to make a way, and so it was just kind of inspira- uh, and inspiring to be able to see somebody you know doing something like that, but doing something other than what I was used to seeing, which is people actually trapping and you know selling drugs and doing all the stuff in the community that. I was around, you know, I was around a lot of people who didn't make music. I was amongst most of my peers around in elementary and middle school, elementary school. Yeah. In middle school <laughs> um, who took that type of interest in wanting to actually pursue something like that instead of just kind of like being like a hood body. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, uh, from what I know of Houston, because I've never been there personally, yeah. uh, like it seems like it's a place that like has bred so much creativity for so long that it's like finally spilling over into the rest of the country. Yeah, it, uh, Houston has kind of like an undiscovered, hidden underground scene. Yeah, you know, I, I I say underground like I feel like here in Portland it's an underground scene, but in Texas, like there is great artists. Like I personally manage two great artists, mm-hmm. but it's just like they're. Uh, their lack of experience takes away from the quality of what they could actually do. Yeah. And so because you don't have people in Texas out there doing what they're doing here in Portland, which is like hosting shows and creating, yeah, creating all those spaces. It's very DIY. You know, yeah, yeah. You don't have people doing those things. So like, you know, my artist had to go to Denver, Colorado to be able mm-hmm. to get shows and I'm I'm having to come and say, Hey, well let me get you booked out here or yeah. get them booked at strip clubs and I'm just like th- y'all don't y'all don't have the the like I understand Portland is a music state, Texas isn't. So like yeah. to be like a person to come out of Texas and doing music as heavily as I have, and then coming here and kind of seeing that, oh yeah, I was doing these things in Texas when nobody was, you know, really thinking about those things. And yeah. then you look at all the people that I make music with or that I had make music with, and it's just like they're still kind of stagnant in the same place, mm-hmm. it's like expecting all of their exposure to come from SoundCloud or regular yeah. music. And it's just like, no. Yeah, it's not localized enough to make that happen. Yeah, and so, I don't know. It was just, I, I want to be that person to kind of step away and just show them, like, it's more than just posting your music on Spotify or expecting the streams to come in. It's it's about being able to innovate yourself. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was just, I wasn't really around too many people down in Texas who, who, took their craft as serious as me. I even like, I, I just recently dropped a song with a guy. Funny story. Me and this guy was cool. All, um, high school. I met him in a uh, ninth grade. Mm-hmm. And when I met him in ninth grade, he says, I'm not a rapper. I don't, I don't make music. Mm-hmm. I don't do this. Yeah. I'm and, not either. <laughs> and then turn around and like me and him drop like a, like a banger, you know, two weeks ago. And I'm just, Oh hell yeah. From somebody who I used to sit in my physics class with talking about, you don't make beats, you don't make songs. And then, yeah, now, now know, we're making, now watching we're his, doing that together. Yeah. And, and then watching his elevation, like his, uh, his elevation into it to where like, He's a pretty credible artist, you know. He has a, a decent amount of a following. Mm-hmm. He has great, uh, uh, like plays. Whenever you go to like his music and stuff, like he's he's a. If if I feel like, I feel, like I said, if we didn't have such a hidden or underground scene, yeah, I feel like like he would have like made something with he it. He would have yeah. been amongst one of the few people to come out of Houston. But like, you know, you have so many like familiar sounds, like Travis Scott, for example, mm-hmm. or. Um, you know, going to singers, Beyonce, yeah. who sound just like, you know, there's people who aren't pursuing music careers who sound exactly like them. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's not, it's not your fault. It's yeah, inevitable. It's, yeah, it's kind of like the culture we grew up in, but it's also because we don't have people, like I said, in Texas to create that culture of what they're doing down here to be able to assist in building experience and being able to um, show them why innovation is needed in your like in your artistry and your yeah. craft. Why why it's imperative to be a little bit complacent to where you are and like getting a little bit uncomfortable. 
Because it's just like you're never going to grow if you don't just sit and like like evaluate those things. And that's kind of like what I did basically with the whole, you know, moving out and trying to. Yeah, trying to pursue it elsewhere just so you could like make a name for it in a bigger space, you know, get, yeah. you know, move into a bigger pond, so to speak. Yeah. And so, and then it's also a way for me to be able to show like my peers and create a platform for my peers, for them to understand, like, yo, I don't, I don't have to manage you, but I do want you to yeah. want you guys to see this platform that I'm creating and that you can join to be able to see like behind the music and producing your music. If you want to have a career in it, you have to learn the business behind it. You yeah. have to understand that, you're just more than your music and beats. Yeah, you're walking so they can run. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's cool. And I mean, I guess we got a little bit away from the initial question, which was just like, what got you started? But like, it sounds like that's kind of what led well, you Well, I mean, here. that's that's too uh, initially what started me because like I said, I've always just kind of been somebody that wanted to be like, you know, that not a trendsetter, but to lead. Yeah. You know, I, I've always seen and put myself in a situation to where um, I need to make sure that whoever is looking at me understands that i mean it's not the right way but it's a, it's a it's a it's a positive way for me to move and you can do that too for yourself as well yeah and that's all i wanted for myself was positive growth as a as a kid you know i feel like i grew up really fast so like as a kid you know sitting in that moment too making that song i'm just like i'm talking about like real life stuff mm -hmm. and people around me are still kind of like stuck in this mentality yeah and i want to be able to show them that it's easy to get away from this mentality so even as a young kid i always felt like i was just always head on with trying to keep everybody um aware of their capabilities mm -hmm. even though you know we're just kids <laughs> yeah no definitely well that is going to make the middle questions of this interview very inspiring i'm excited to get to that point but sticking with the foundation parts for the beginning i have a couple core questions i check in with everybody on and i want to yeah. knock those out before we get too far into it mm -hmm. this first one it's one we ask early it's one we ask often and it's definitely a crowd favorite what was the first album you ever bought with your own money the first album that I ever bought with my own money. Um, I'm not going to say I bought it, but the experience bought me because it stuck with me ever since then. It was one out because I've always in essence DJ. So I always kind of knew how to get some music or get knew where to get my music. Yeah. The Carter three. Okay. The Carter three. I was okay. listening to that. I was listening to that album way way before like Lil Wayne decided to go on that legendary feature run mm -hmm. and just take over the game yeah. officially the Carter 3 was one of those albums where it was just like dang like I want I want to I listen to every last one of those songs like to this day I will listen to every last one of those songs mm -hmm. front to end and that album right there is the only reason why I appreciate listening to an album from front to end especially when I'm first starting it yeah I didn't get the opportunity to do that whenever uh, I first heard the Carter 3 I listened to I, my favorite song off the Carter 3 was 3P mm -hmm. um, just because his longevity yeah like that was the first time and you go back and you listen to all his music before the Carter three and then listen to his music after the Carter three, he can carry that longevity in rapping now, oh, yeah. but it's not as contentful. It's not as meaningful. It's not as, as like impactful as what he was like talking about in, the, in three P. And so I was listening to that song and that just kind of just made me tune into why it's important to be able to know how to rap, have mm -hmm. good lyrics, mm -hmm but also know how to cultivate your artist yeah. as an artist and as somebody who has a story to tell. Because often, oftentimes I refer to the Carter Three as my life story, even though I didn't live his, the same life as him. Mm -hmm. I put myself in the same shoes because uh, I feel like Lil Wayne is kind of like that That what I was saying, basically, he's a good example of showing people what it feels like to make it out the hood. Yeah. Even though you you grew up in this, like he grew up in the murder capital. Well, I'm I'm very aware <laughs> of his story in particular. <laughs> and look at where he where he's at now. I mean, you know, you could even compare it to like what Snoop Dogg is doing. I mean, yeah, it's like that. You know, comparatively, they both taken a step where they have this background of who they were. 
Mm -hmm. stepped outside of it. Yeah. And I say Lil Wayne because I've listened to Snoop Dogg, I feel like, more than I did Lil Wayne yeah. um, when I was younger. But I say I, I really tuned into the Carter Three just because, like I said, it I felt like it was a life story that I was able to, one, really relate, um, relate with because it wasn't... Um, it's, it's, it's like what I was saying earlier with like the influence of words and music mm -hmm. people. Um, he's not, he's not a negative influence. He's a storyteller. Yeah. Well, he's, he is a lot like how like Tyler is. Yeah. Like you, you know, Lil Wayne's full story through his music, you mm -hmm. know, Tyler, the creator's story through his music, like the music is exists as a way for them to continue their own saga mm -hmm. that they get to continue to add something to by existing every single day. So they always have something new to say in a way because they continue to be here to say something. Mm -hmm. And they came from a place where like, well, at least, you know, Lil Wayne came from a place where there was a potential to have not. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I Just as a fun add-on, the first album I ever bought with my own money was The Carter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like I great album I, too. Yeah. I I know we, I could still do the entire first song from memory. <laughs> I say it every time. I'm still not gonna do it on the show. Uh but like yes, very much. I, I can totally see where you're coming from yeah. with that. And that's actually I really I appreciate that view on it that like he is like because I've never put the correlation of those two together in that respect. Like I've always respected them. I mean <laughs> very good at both at what they do individually. But like also didn't Little Wayne inspire Tyler? Like doesn't he said like gone on record saying like that's that's I don't I don't know as much of his story as Oh I yeah, no. Like, like he Wayne Wayne is I knew that Lil Wayne was gonna be one of the best rappers. Well, because he said it in that time. <laughs> yeah. But in that time I knew that he was gonna be one of the best rappers just because one to be a, a a hood street dude, being able to touch like like touch the charts the way that he did, yeah, it's phenomenal. Well, I'll even go. I'll take it a step further. <laughs> For him to be coming from the setting he came from, and to be able to release a concept album, because mm -hmm. the, the Carter was a concept, oh, album. most definitely like, the very first song. Mm -hmm. And the reason I always point out is because it's literally him describing you walking into a house. And he never breaks that. He is literally just, I, I know what the house looks like. Mm -hmm. I, I have a full image of this house from start to finish. And not a lot of people were doing something like that while also continuing to deliver. Mm -hmm. It was either like, you know, like you had the stuff growing up, like, you know, like, uh, Jay Z and yeah. Well, I mean like, yeah, like, but even like early stuff, I'm blanking on the name of everything today because it's later <laughs> than usual, but like back in the day, you know, like, uh, like they would tell the stories, but some of it was a little on the goofy side sometimes. So like yeah. to get that imagery, just because he was so put together with words at such a young age. Like mm -hmm. I think for the Carter, he was like less than 20. 20 yeah. Like he was so young. And so to be able to deliver this like visceral experience. Yeah. I think he was like 16 when he put out, uh, when he was a part of um, the hot boys and put out 500 degrees. Yeah. And that was another album I really enjoyed by him. Just being, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'll, in defense, though, I'm sure we could break down his entire work for an entire episode. Y'all have to come back later. For that one. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. Let's let's get back into let's get back into you because yeah. we have plenty of questions and I want to hear more of your story. Uh, for this next one, it's kind of in the same vein, though. Mm. What was the first live show you ever went to? That was like one you wanted to go to. So like not like one that somebody took you to, but like you saw it was happening, got tickets, went to it. Um. And so help me if it's Lil Wayne as well. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just I kidding. wish. <laughs> Put me in a Lil Wayne concert. I'm probably going to get kicked out because I'm going to try to get on stage. <laughs> I don't know. Lil Wayne, I, if you're watching. Lil Wayne, if you're watching. We'll take two know. tickets. <laughs> um, But uh, I think it was Schoolboy Q. Okay. Schoolboy Q. Hell yeah. Um, Growing up, I was a huge TDE fan. Mm -hmm. Um, To which Kendrick Lamar. Well, I will say Kendrick Lamar, Mac Miller, and Lil Wayne were the few people that I was listening to. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, and Joey Badass. So, of course, I wanted to go to any one of their concerts. Yeah. I got to go to the Schoolboy Q concert because around the time, I know that that's when um, Oxymoron came out. Mm -hmm. Oxymoron came out around that time. Yeah. And so, um, I was just heavy on my West, um, on my Cali, Vince Staples, yeah. Schoolboy Q. Great experience. I actually met him in person, too. 
Oh damn, short dude! No, I, 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 I could see that. I could see that. Very Granted, short. You're, dude. you're relatively tall, so yeah. like, you know, I, yeah. I feel like there's a perception there for sure. But I could. He doesn't strike me as the tallest person. Yeah, no, he's um, he's very short, um, but very cool. Um, he's very reserved. Yeah. Um, I feel like given the time period since he was coming out of this heavy gangster phase, mm-hmm. I didn't really get to see the personality that I see as golfing Q. Yeah. Which I saw him as golfing Q. But also I can say I'm appreciative because I feel like around the time he did a lot of music that again was influential to me. I yeah. feel like around that time I was really getting through um um I was really not struggling but living through times where I felt like I was very influenced by the gang lives and Mm -hmm. the drug use and the trapping and stuff like that. So hearing something, hearing somebody else's stories, not necessarily glorifying it, but explaining the ends of out of what they lived, how they, how he lived, what he had to experience really put a perspective on who it was, who it was that I was trying to be. And so being able to see him in concert, I saw uh, it was him, Vince Staples and a group called, uh, audio push and this was that oh, damn um and that was actually the first concert vince staples yeah that was the first time i had saw vince staple get booed whoa yeah he whoa. got booed and um he was on the stage man y'all whack da, 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 y'all got and so that was my first experience watching like an artist crash yeah like a famous person yeah like, you already knew had the stats and this was and the whole the, room was just like nah he was just coming up on fame like he had just dropped like taxi not too long ago that was one of his first songs i had listened to him okay um i think it was taxi uh, vince curry uh, vince uh staples mm-hmm. um if it, if it wasn't him, that was Denzel Curry. But it was around the time when they both were coming up and yeah. kind of like making the scene and stuff. So it just kind of like... I'll be honest, you know, names blend together for me all the yeah. time. <laughs> I, I, I get it. And I was just starting my rap career too around that time. So, you know, of course it's, yo, you got any you got any advice for me? And be yeah, a yeah. rapper. Yeah. But can you tell me to be like, you know, just what's, your, to, <laughs> what's your secret? <laughs> you know, it's not like I, I wasn't thinking, you know, I was a super, super fanboy artist where yeah. I was just like, you know, oh, I'm going to see a dope artist. I'm meeting, greeting him. You know, I, yeah. I paid like 300 bucks for it. It was yeah. cheap as hell. I was just like, you don't get prices like that. No, I, I mean, <laughs> we're not going to get into ticket prices for things now and day. So ticket master. Live Nation, go away, go away. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a really cool experience because I, I like I said, I it, I got to experience somebody that, like watch somebody that I really admired around the time. I got to see somebody crash and burn, so I knew what it felt like to yeah be in a be in an environment where people were just not necessarily against you, but they didn't know you. Yeah, and he was that's what he was dealing with. Yeah, you still had to you had to earn it. Yeah, like when you get so far out of your regular space that you like sometimes forget that you have to earn it that can that, i mean that could be humbling for, for like any artist really but i mean i imagine that being a very learned experience to like walk away with yeah especially when it was somebody that you were probably already expecting to be excited about yeah. which was funny because um the audio push group that uh perform you know auto P- audio mm-hmm. pushes yeah so the audio push group that performed they got a way better feedback there i'm talking about they had just dropped the album but Lil wayne was on it so i figured like they had yeah. a decent amount of like credibility but i was just like you know, I would have expected something, you know, a little bit more out of what y'all gave in Staples and yeah. <laughs> I would have expected y'all to boo, boo this other group. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. It just put in perspective uh, what I had to expect or what I needed to expect from the uh, industry. I wasn't thinking about, like, performing in front of this many people or whatnot, but yeah. it's kind of, like, set the stage and, like, really explain, like, I, it, it made me think, like, seeing Schoolboy Q come out to... Um, uh, what's that song? Um, uh, Man of the Year, mm-hmm. smoking. That was the dopest shit ever. Oh yeah, because like, I, I, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, in Texas, you're allowed to smoke on stage. Yeah. Yeah, because so, it's a it's a performance art. Yeah. So I'm just like, dude came out, he's smoking good dope, and I'm just like, I want to do that. Like, come <laughs> out so blunt. I got a song called Smoker Lungs. If I, <laughs> yeah, I just need might that. as well. You know, but it was it was like I said, a, a good like setting point for me to you know see what to expect it wasn't super huge it wasn't a lot of people there yeah um but it was still an experience for somebody like me to be able to like say hey yeah i'm an artist and that's something i can see myself doing hell yeah 
No, I love that. And that sounds like a pretty defining moment. Yeah. I feel like the JID moment, my JID concert was better. That was like my third concert I'd seen. Yeah. Um, I feel like that one's always going to be my most impactful one because around... Well, I mean, getting to meet JID is just it's like... Crazy. You know what's funny? He actually called me weird when we met. <laughs> because when we first... So, I was... Okay, again, I was a fanboy artist. Yeah. And this ruined my chance on getting on stage, but meet and greet, I paid 180 bucks for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. Right. <laughs> yeah, I would I would have done that. I'm the first person in line. I met him first. Yeah. But what had happened was we was all waiting, and he said, oh, I'm about to go bowling. Who wants to come over and go bowling with me? It was a bowling alley right across the way, so I go over there, and I'm thinking about to go bowling. And he says, oh, we're not about to go bowling. Never mind. Um, I think he tweeted it. This is when Twitter was just like, mm. I was just like, oh, yeah, let me get on Twitter. Yeah. And then we all, it's me, JID, and two other guys. We're all just sitting on the elevator. And I'm just like, oh, fuck, this is my moment. I yeah. see him go to the elevator. I'm just like, oh, fuck, this is my moment. I get on the elevator. I have a blunt rolled. I ask him, yo, you trying to smoke this? He says, nah. I don't know what else to do. I just stop and be quiet. They're talking oh, about no. Movies. All I had to do was talk about a good movie. Yeah. I just stopped break down and just like, uh. <laughs> and so like, you know, he leaves or whatnot. And he's just like, all right, bro, dab me up. I'm like standing in front of the tour bus and everything. I could have probably like, if I would have been weird, I could have probably hopped on a tour bus with him. <laughs> I get upstairs because everybody knew I was on the quest to go and try to like, yeah. Let's talk to him like the first five people or whatnot. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah we, we know you went down there. You can get your spot back. I go there. I meet him. He, 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 we walk up. He was just like, oh, yeah, I remember you used that weird ass dude on the, uh, on the elevator. I said, oh, no. <laughs> and then, like, you know, I was just like, yeah, bro, I just, I didn't know what to say, bro. He was just like, yeah, it's all cool. And I was just, he was just like, you got any questions? And I was just like, well, I was just like, well, I'm an artist. You know, what advice do you got for me? He was like, I ain't got a lot of time. So I'm like, and I was like, dang, I should never ask that question. Damn, yeah. And so that was just like, that was in that moment, I learned how to be humble. And I expect that he was going to stop everything for me just to yeah. give me some pointers in a game to getting famous. Like that even mattered. In all fairness, the one takeaway you could, you could get from that, I think would be like the fact that he's like, I don't have like, he didn't have any like bullshit answer for you either. He yeah, wasn't he like, was oh, up. make sure to do your homework, uh, get some sleep. Basically, like, you know, he didn't, exactly he didn't have those default went. answers. Yeah. He was just like, no, like that's not a question I could answer quickly. Yeah, he just much that goes into it. I'm mean, sure, you know, I'm sure he got it a lot, but like, uh, you know, the, the takeaway from that could just be like, there was too much to like give you one answer. Yeah. But I mean, I, I learned, I learned that the fact, cause like I said, I ended up, I ended up, I was a front row seat. I had a front row seat mm -hmm. and me and J, me and Jid's talking a whole night. Like we're just kind of like, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, whenever an artist is performing and whatnot, and they kind of find that one artist that's like matching his energy. And whatnot, yeah. I feel like that's kind of like what happened. We were just kind of like matching everybody, um, matching everybody's energy. Mm hmm. Um, I mean, matching his energy, and then I ended up. Um, they ended up getting to the 151 song, and I'm just like, "Oh, this is my moment. It's time to get on stage." Yeah. And he brings somebody else up, and I'm just like, "Yo, he's looking at me. I'm looking at him. And he's just like, I'm sorry, bro. He asked first. Damn. I like I was the first person to meet you, man. Like, uh. So I learned how to be humble as an artist and not over, you know." not over yeah Kate you know yeah. meeting at first hand because they don't got time <laughs> no dude. hey but I mean you still got to meet him yeah it was pretty that, cool pretty like cool. I said it was a it was a sensational moment because it was just like around that time I had um I had he had dropped DiCaprio too and um I was in the middle of working on one of my albums mm -hmm. which I never really I never released this album it was called um mm -hmm. emotive language Basically, um, emotive language basically is where that evokes emotion. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to create an album basically that um, for the people, like for specific people that listen to it, he created that certain emotion. But uh, understanding like most albums are built for emotive, like that has some type of emotive language. I wanted my album to actually like... Say for so if, for example, I had songs on there that really I felt like pulled and tugged at tugged at like controversial stuff that I felt like I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. That like I felt like if I was to like sit down and like 
I actually wrote once. I actually recorded and released one of the songs. It was called A Drunk Man's Tale. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, it basically just explained like um, my like me chasing like me chasing my feelings with liquors. And so um, I wasn't able to write something like that until I listened to J.I.D.'s album. Mm. And so being able to see, you know, that was a story. That was a story, the best story that I've actually listened to off of an album. Yeah. Being able to listen to that and then coming around and producing that type of work just was just oh, not, not, not necessarily just that type of work. But that type of thought process for myself, yeah, really just kind of like put in perspective. Like, I'm a, I'm, I can really do this. I know how to really produce as an artist. Yeah. So I think that uh, going to CJID just really like, because all of this happened after I met him and mm-hmm. had that experience. And I, I just, I feel like if I would never met him, I would never had that moment click for me and me realize that this is something that I could really do and know how to do it and understand that how I'm talking and speaking about music now, I probably wouldn't have been able to have that same passion if I wouldn't have met that kid. <laughs> Damn. Well, that's powerful. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. And like I said, usually this is where I would ask what was your defining moment, but it sounds like that that's a pretty defining one. Yeah. Um, but let's go ahead. Let's move on to you in the present day. Let's get to know a little bit more about what you're doing now, but we are going to get a super easy one out of the way. How'd you pick the name? <laughs> name generated. Interesting. Yeah. Um, 200 interviews generated. and I've never gotten that answer yet. Name generated. Um, I've gone through different rap names. Um, my very first rap name, the song, the song, the very first song I did, my rap name was Brat Boy Kid Fresh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I dropped everything and did just Kid. Mm-hmm. Um, K I D D. And then shortly after that, I dropped it and I did K Y D D because mm. I wanted to do something different. Mm hmm. Um, but that was already somebody's name, Kid Kid. Yeah. And so um, I was in college and I don't know what, inc- like what pushed me to actually like do that. But I was just like, I wanted to change my name. So I had gone through a couple of things and I had, I remember sticking on C Reigns because hmm. my first name is Cullen. So I was just like C Reigns. Uh, that sounds pretty decent um, based off of the wrestler, Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like me, like I had a very close connection to like his, his, character his personality yeah and i kind of wanted to copy that resilience in my music um but then i figured that sounds like um a singer or something like it just yeah yeah right with me like i didn't feel i didn't feel myself wanting to be called up on stage as c reigns yeah so i think I, i i went in and just like looked up something random and I got a couple of names, but Moody Pax stuck out the most because I'm just like, okay, well, I can make a meaning out of this, but what does Pax mean? Mm-hmm. Pax means a kiss of peace in Latin. And I'm just like, mm. I'm a very peaceful dude. Like, yeah. you know, I've been through a lot. Um, I've been through a lot, but I've always been the one to always keep the peace and just like make people feel comfortable. And I don't know, like, this is what I personally think. I mean, if anybody else thinks different, then you know, let me know. <laughs> but I, I <laughs> leave it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'll for sure say that I'm a very peaceful person, and I don't like to be around a lot of drama. And yeah. especially in college, I was always just kind of like staying out the way. I was a peacemaker. Mm-hmm. I was everybody's friend. Everybody knew of me. I was chill. You know, I yeah. Really doing thing. I'm a stoner, so you know, most of the time I'm just kind of like stoned out, just chilling out, and you know, not really worrying about life or the dramas or the troubles. And um, I remember that day after picking that um, picking that name. I have a good friend. Her name is Angie. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out Angie. Shout out Angie. Oh, I love Angie. I, I I have to give you my story. I mean, technically, this is her story because <laughs> she inspired me. <laughs> she inspired me to actually be a little bit more like, uh, what's the word? Um, um, pres- not precise, but like intentional intentional with how i move as an artist and like why i do my music the way that i do Mm -hmm. so after i came up with this name we sat and we talked for like four plus hours i mean we're everywhere on campus we're in the library we're Mm -hmm. in the cafeteria we're in my room we're in my ex's room we're in her room we're just all just like we're just sitting down for hours 
talking about what this could mean mm. and she put an interesting perspective on it which i actually still kind of like go about and it's why i named my album series and and i'm doing my album series the way that it is mm-hmm. um but it had to do with um so moody moody packs how i perceived it is and what we came up with is basically like a spectrum of basically personalities mm-hmm. so i'm peaceful I know how to find peace, peace in different personalities for myself, mm-hmm. for different emotions. And so uh, we came up with this concept of like saying like, what if we do it to where like the what whatever albums I drop or whatever songs I decide to drop, it happens in terms of a spectrum. I was going to drop this album called Spectrum, basically, where it touched on like the many different like uh, variations of um, emotions and uh, personalities that I can um, pull out and how I how I tend to find peace in those. Mm-hmm. Um, but I felt like that was going to be too complex of an album to do. Um, and so I stuck with the name, um, but I ended up taking out, like uh, taking the concept of like those multiple personalities and finding the peace in between them and just adding it to my music mm-hmm. um, in separate albums and having a concept instead of just like one album with a different bunch of different concepts gotcha um um and so that's how and and that's why i was that's why i decided to keep the name too because it just made sense you know to my character to my artistry to my to how i was structuring my music because beforehand i was just making music i wasn't necessarily like yeah Uh, yeah you weren't doing it with any kind of intention yeah yeah yeah. and so i remember after doing all of this i I wrote this song called mira basically and it has it it embodies basically what moody packs means Hmm. um like some of the lyrics is um all these mirrors breaking up around me Mm -hmm. i cannot take it my mind is complacent you know just kind of like talking about like i find myself in different emotions different head spaces different personalities almost every day i'm not like I don't have like multiple personalities or nah. like that, but I do know that like I'm emotion, like I'm driven off of high like emotion. And mm-hmm. so like if something makes me happy or if it gets me up, I'm going to be up and happy and excited. Yeah. I'm going to ride that energy. If something makes me upset and I'm sad, I'm going to ride that energy, yeah. you know, any way that I go. So I figured it was the best way to be able to explain myself as who I was and for it to make sense towards how I provided my music because hmm. my artist name is just a, a replica of how I want to create my art. Damn. Hell yeah. That might be the most extensive answer to the, the, the name question I've ever gotten. <laughs> but no, that's that's really... And it, it. I still think it's funny that circling back that you got it from a random generator, yeah. but it seems like it was anything but random in the end. And one more shout out to Angie for helping you, you <laughs> expand that the way that you did. That's oh really my cool. God. Oh my God. Um, oh, but now let's go ahead it. and let's talk about your writing process. Okay. And we're going to break it up into chunks, but we're going to start right at the beginning. So when you get inspired, you're ready to make music. What are some of the things you do to get a track started? I have different ways. I I've most I most definitely have recreated my process of making music. Mm-hmm. I used to sit on beats mm-hmm. and write to them. And then I ended up taking it to where I would write to a beat, find another beat, and just finish writing whatever it was that I was writing so that I'd be able to find the diver- like the versatility in whatever it is I was writing. Mm-hmm. Um, as of lately, I've been doing a lot of freestyling. Mm. Um, I'm not a, I'm not huge on freestyle. I'm not a big freestyler. I don't know how to freestyle. I do know how to freestyle. But if you had to ask me, <laughs> if you had to ask me to freestyle on the spot, I probably won't do good. <laughs> well, surprise everybody. <laughs> um, but if I'm like freestyling, I'm just kind of like not worrying about anything. Yeah. I'm probably going to do good. But as of lately, I feel like my best. And I'm going to say that very loosely because I am a phenomenal writer. I'm going to stand on that. Mm hmm. I I write great. But I feel like my best stuff has been coming off of freestyles just because it feels a little bit more authentic and yeah. not forced. Um that too I'm able to go in freely without having to actually think about what it is that I want to do. So this uh, this album that I've been working on which I want to say this for the past two well 
This album that I'm working on is mainly freestyle, to which most of the time I would say, hmm, I want to make a song. Yeah. And I want it to sound like this. I'll go find the beat, have it sound like how I want it to sound. And then I'll just go, like, just start spitting words. Yeah. <laughs> um, But the album before this one, I was I was extensively writing, like, you can tell the difference in my writing from this next album that I'm um drop mm -hmm. as opposed to my love piece three album, mm -hmm. um, which was the one that I most recently dropped. And even the one before that love, um, love piece, um, that one was very extensively, like really extensively wrote in cause I had somebody produce all the beats on there for me. Mm -hmm. And we all sat like, that was one producer. We sat in session. Yeah. I, he gave me a beat i come back with something written and that one was a little bit more um um closer to my story mm -hmm. so i haven't i haven't written like a story about myself yet mm -hmm. um i haven't i haven't written my life story out either i typically talk about either just wanting to like improve in myself mm -hmm talking about how I feel like, you know, just being full of myself or talking about how like, you know, just one of those things where I'm just like the odd one out. Yeah. And, you know, I'm good at what I do. Um Pete Love my Love Peace uh album. Oh no, 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 not Love Peace. It was called Peace Please. Mm -hmm. So most of my album so everything up until twenty let's see, mass destruction, twenty 18. I want to say about 2018 is when I started changing everything up to match that my name personality of mm -hmm. what I want to create with my music. And so like I dropped a um a freestyle to, uh not freestyle but I, I did a collab mixtape with somebody which that was all freestyled. Mm -hmm. And then I started working on my love I dropped my love piece series the first one um and so I want to kind of explain the writing style behind that because I feel like that's kind of just like will explain how I write. Mm -hmm. Love Peace 1 was chaotic. It was supposed to be chaotic. I wasn't in a place to where I wanted to, where I feel like I could process things the way that I needed to process them and talk about them intelligently mm -hmm. and uh, maturely. And so that was just kind of like a mixture of bad sound, bad quality, um, like very very loose and like careless writing mm -hmm. and then i did um i have a the collab album that i did with my uh, artist it's called mass destruction mm -hmm. and that one was more uh more i was trying to step more into like wanting to write more freely and just kind of express myself without having to be attached to like a certain uh, a certain style that I was trying to produce. So that whole album, I just kind of stepped out of my comfort zone and did sounds that I ne necessarily wasn't comfortable with doing, mm -hmm. which bred it, uh, which bred um, my next album, a government plant, which was very conscious, very, uh, not necessarily a story, um, a, my life story, but a story of my personality. Um, just uh, because uh, when I dropped the government plant, I was just super, super into one changing my mentality changing how i was and what kind of like habits i formed mm -hmm. um and also trying to um like bring awareness to what it is that i was talking about so i i gave myself the opportunity because some of the songs on there were freestyle but most of them were written and that's actually the album that a drunk man tell ended up on hmm. where i um where i was talking about a lot of my vices mm -hmm. basically mainly drinking my drinking vice and so um uh, in that instance, I really learned that I was capable of writing and I knew how to write and be able to put like double entendres together, triple entendres together and and really just like express my wordplay. Yeah. Um. So after that, I dropped Love Piece 2, which was a little bit um, a little bit more sadder. Mm -hmm. it talked a little bit more about um, uh, like my relationship with myself, my relationship with God, my relationship with my friends um talking about like um uh who I was and who I wanted to be mm -hmm. compared to like um what it was that I was becoming 
And then I also talked a little bit about like uh, the people that hurt me. And so um, in that album, Love, Peace 2, um, I was learning how to find peace in, in, in disappointment, but also understand like understanding like the qualities of like, I, I didn't, I didn't, I was, I, I loved my life, but I hated myself. I was like doing a lot of stuff that I felt like I wasn't necessarily supposed to be doing, but I was living a fun and good life to which I was just like, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm not liking this person of me, but I'm enjoying my life. Yeah. Um, and, um, I don't know, that just really put into perspective, like that really put into perspective of how I wanted to continue to create music. Cause I don't want to continue to make sad music like that. Yeah. Um, to which I ended up dropping or working on a uh, piece, please, which is, um, which has to do with the, that talks about me confronting exactly what it is that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, what the first song is called company, basically talking about how I really like, I don't, I don't dwell in alo being alone, uh, very well. And so I was just basically talking about how, like, I need the company to feel like I'm something. Um, and and like this is what's going on in my head and then it kind of continued on this because it's a story I actually that was an actual story piece please and so it continued on with talking about like okay i need some company let me go find that person let me find that person and then we start to vibe out and then once we start to vibe out we start to go through the hardships and then after the hardships i understand that i need to take time for myself because time waits for no man the last song is called free thought t-h-o-t mm -hmm. um and it's basically talking about like i the first line i say is time waits for no man and i'm just basically talking about like i need to get out of this this like i said i was confronting everything and i was also realizing that i can't stay in this cycle i can't keep in this cycle yeah even with writing you know i wrote notes i used to write notes to myself all the time when i was younger and just like talking about how I feel and what I'm like my perception of myself mm -hmm. and I didn't want to continue to create that perception of myself so love peace three was all fun all up stuff just like bragging about myself yeah talking about like how what great energy I have me saying that I'm, I'm looking for my peace and I want my peace and my peace is my peace and I'm gonna spread my peace I'm gonna continue to uplift my people um I'm worth it I'm worthy I'm, I'm going to make, you know, all these positive affirmations yeah. basically talking about, you know, from from peace, please. It says, OK, you found your peace or like you asking for peace. It came. Yeah. And so um, well, even the way you talked about the third one, you, you brought a whole nother energy just in the description of it that like really reflects that. And so um, I want to say now from all of that my writing style is taking a turn back and like making a 360 and i'm not necessarily writing sad songs but i'm more now i've i've decided to start freestyling and then writing like our freestyle concept and then write something like i'll restructure it to write it out or something like that because i feel like now i'm being a little bit more raw mm -hmm. i'm being a little bit more um relatable not just like my, I'm not just talking about my situations, but I'm talking about things that people are indulging in. I'm talking about things people are like setting their environments up to be. I'm talking about because um, I feel like right now we're in a state where um, at first people were kind of just like cordial, wanting to come together community. Mm -hmm. Now we're in a state where everybody's just kind of like fending for themselves, doing yeah. their own thing and trying to pop out individually and i'm just like i'm talking about those things now i'm just kind of being more um aware of what's going on in, yeah. like our environment and stuff like that and i guess that's why it's easier for me to freestyle as opposed to write because i feel like i'm thinking too much when it comes to like the writing process now as opposed to um just getting up and saying okay let me just go work on this song and see what i can get out of it mm -hmm. i just recorded a song it was funny I recorded, um, I had, my friends have been trying to get me to write a song that I wrote in, uh, high school, <laughs> hmm. uh, in 10th grade. I wrote a song in like 10th grade and I dropped it. It was on a government's plant. It was called Private Dancer. It was like a real sexy, slow, nice. They've, they've been trying to get me to rewrite that song. And I'm just like, I don't know how to do that until the other night. I was just like, I want to do that instead of trying to write the song. Let me just go and let me yeah, just go just, and just do it. it down. Yeah. 
And that came out to be way better than the written version. I know it's like, you know, time, a lot of yeah. time has passed. I've gotten way more experience. And You're not in high school anymore. But like to consider that I freestyled that half tipsy. <laughs> yeah. And it came out sounding like something ready for a finished product. I feel like the style that I've adapted so far is just it's coming out to being so much more like raw and authentic and like you can connect more and be more um um you can you can relate more to it as you know who we are in society right now <laughs> damn well that was a that was a very extensive play by play of all your albums that you or a handful of your albums that you put out Sorry, I, no no that was perfect like, I, I, I mean like to I, I really like to I really like concept I feel like that's what we're missing no and I you know I mean we we talked about that a little off camera as well as we could talk about it on camera like I the intention in music, I think, is really important. Like, I think that like design of the album, the like the thoughts that go into why we create are so so important, just for so many so many reasons. And so, like, being able to hear you kind of break down your collection of work, and like, not only that, but like, you have kind of intended for it to be that way from the beginning. Not so much in the like, this one's going to be like this, this one's going to be like that, this one's going to be like that. But as you approach each one, mm -hmm. you took the opportunity to look at it and be like, what will this one be? And then when you saw a, a concept for it to exist as, you made it as such. You weren't just like, oh, well, this song's going to be this way, this song's going to, like you said before, you didn't just have a thousand different approaches in one album to like put an album together. You took a thousand approaches and made one album from each of them. And like going back, like looking at your work, you put out an album a year for a grip of time. Like you, you have a consistent release but it's not a hey guys it's friday here's another song i just made so you still showed up like i said i keep running back to the word intention you sh you keep showing up on time but your time is not everybody else's time it's your time mm -hmm. and so i think that allows to bring a more thoughtful product if you want to use the word i don't love use no, call I, 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 that. I agree with that no it brings it brings because if we're being honest, the twenty fifth is the uh, yeah it's the twentieth. The twenty fifth is basically when I dropped Love Piece three, and so like I'm trying to roll out another album now, and I feel like yeah, it's everything like this this whole next album. I feel like I'm not even ready to drop it because it's just like I have so much content ready for yeah. it that I don't want to overload it. No, you want to put it out thoughtfully. Yeah, and and it's 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 done it's, it's done but not done yeah but it's done but not ready it's one of those things where it's just like <laughs> i feel like i have to break the process of what i normally do just to make sure yeah just to make sure it all out night correctly yeah this one this album right here though it's not as deep and like introspective as the love piece series is because i'm yeah. about to get i'm getting ready to end my love piece series mm -hmm. i'm ended off with the four um oh can i uh have you ever seen the movie the pest mm -mm. oh well then this joke is not gonna land <laughs> never mind i'll tell you later <laughs> but um no i'm trying to end off on um on the fourth to which the fourth uh love piece series uh installment of the love piece series is going to embody basically a spectrum mm -hmm. of what I was saying, how I wanted to start it with. Yeah. I wanted to embody the spectrum of what I did through love peace. Hmm. Um, I just need to learn a lesson. I don't know what lesson it is that I need to learn, but it's a lesson that I'm going to learn for the love piece for. But um, this next album that I'm getting ready to do is going to sound significantly different from all the projects that I did because it's going to be one, be a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Um, to match the energy of what we're kind of going through but also it's going to be a little bit more like i'm saying raw but like when i say raw i mean like i feel like i'm gonna really start touching on stuff that's like not necessarily hard to talk about but hard to hear yeah you know as us as artists we're, we're afraid we're, we could talk about the ups all day talk about how great we're doing and all the but nobody wants to talk about the lows. No, everybody's everybody's living the high life up here in Portland, and I'm just like, no, we need to get a little raw and real. Yeah, <laughs> damn. No, I mean, it, like I said, I, I really appreciate the thoughts that you put into your approaches on things. Um, but also, you have answered so many of the questions so organically. That was a really cool rundown of it. I actually, I really appreciated that. Mm. Um, but I've got two questions left in this middle portion that I want to make sure that we get on here for sure. Okay. Um, and this first one's uh, kind of like the end of this, the first round of questions, a little more like, like 
Ah, kind of airy. Uh, but what is one of your favorite songs to perform? Hmm. <sighs> one of my favorite songs to perform is Smoker Lungs. Um, that song was the breakthrough song mm -hmm. I had to the great music that I've been making. When I did Smoker Lungs, um, <sighs> shout out Hawk. Shout out Hawk. I miss Hawk, man. <laughs> oh, <coughs> I called him Supreme Master Hawk. <laughs> man, that man was a beast. I tell you, we had sessions where I'd go down to his basement and like we're sitting in front of keyboards, bass and all these different instruments. And he's yeah. just going through and like yeah. playing all these instruments and whatnot. It was one day in particular. We're sitting down. And I'm not sure if he made the beat from scratch or if he just played the beat out of his like out of his pack or whatnot, but it dude, this dude plays this beat and I'm just like, whoa, 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 what is this? I like this. It's simple. It's a very simple beat until the hook comes in. And that's why I like it, because like I rap. And mm -hmm. so like I like to make sure I don't have it. there's not a lot like not a lot in the space where I'm rapping. Yeah. And if there is, I'm rapping fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're just sitting in my um apartment and I think I finished the song in like less than an hour but I'm just kind of like going through my thoughts or whatnot, and I'm sitting with my homie and I say something and I'm just like I got the smoke lungs yeah yeah and that's the only thing I got the smoke lungs yeah yeah I got the smoke lungs. and I didn't know what else to come after that but it was such a vibe and like when I start, when I vibe with something and I start writing something, yeah, I go and I'm not stopping. And mm -hmm. I'm going to keep on writing. And so it was, it was a collection of things where um, I had a guy who had just, uh, who I had just worked with. I had him on my show. He has a song, his name is Hamza. Um, he has a song called Breathe. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it says, don't forget to breathe, breathe. And like, I have a part of my song where I'm just like, uh, um, don't forget to breathe, breathe. And I, I had that part already in my head. Mm -hmm. and I'm just like all of these elements that come through. It's like it was the easiest. I felt like it was the easiest. It wasn't the easiest song to write, but it felt like one of my easiest songs to write. But it's also my favorite to perform just because it's just like it's it, it made like crowd interaction on point. Yeah. Like I know that's one of the songs where I can I can perform it. But then I have to get down and talk to the crowd when I'm performing. Yeah. Because the structure of the song, I'm talking. Yeah. Rapping. Well, I mean, I am rapping, but like, it feels like I'm explaining something as opposed to rapping lyrics on the song. Yeah. Um, And so it's just something like, it's one of the one, one songs that everybody remembers too. Like, it's easy for people to be able to like... Like most of the time when I see people, they either, I got the smoke alarms, yeah, yeah. Because it's just like, that's the staple of the song. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like catchy, but yeah. at the same time, like it, it's got a, like, a, like a feel to it. Yeah, yeah. And so um, it's also one of those songs um, I feel like that uh, that taught me how to perform to the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, because all the songs that I did, like, for a while it was just very hard for me to like write songs to perform yeah which i am doing now i'm able to perform a lot more of my songs but like my soup my songs are super wordy my yeah super yeah so like finding the breath for them finding the way to deliver them while moving around versus just standing at the mic like mm -hmm. yeah that is a whole other element for sure and i write my music to where it's just like you're always listening like you always have to like i don't give like i try to give the listener a break but only like a sweet break like a beat break like yeah like in the song i have a beat break where the beat plays for like 10 seconds and then the next verse mm -hmm. um but that's also why i structure my verses and how i write to be able to like the hook has a lot but then the verse break like dumbs it down so that they yeah. can be able to catch that break with their ears but still listen to what it is that i'm saying oh yeah um it is like i said it's one of my favorites to perform i have another one i haven't performed it a lot but it's a. Uh, it's called um, um, Cardio. It's with uh, Kit Curry, hmm. uh, one of my good friends. Mm -hmm. He, um, I remember going and uh, recording this song, and I had just finished it. It's a drill song, and the, the producer was just like, I have a guy that you could put on it. 
And I was skeptical. I was just like, I don't know who else. Will, I, I, I've never, like, this is my second drill song. I was yeah. like, I don't know who else to put on this. Is he good? Like, uh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we did it. And like, every time we do that song, it pops off. We just don't do it enough. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, but, you know, it has to be, it has between, be between cardio and smoke and lungs. It's, um, like I said, it's just one of those things where I can talk and be present to the crowd the most. Oh, yeah. Um, working towards making like more vibey stuff for the crowd and stuff, even yeah. slower stuff. Um, the um, the private dancer song that I just did, I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to create a, create that song so like dancers can dance to that song because mm-hmm. um, it has that kind of a tempo to it. Also, if you can get your song at a strip club, it usually tends to pop off. Yeah, yeah, that's just, that's just good marketing. Yeah, you yeah. know, I have I have one of my songs in the clubs right now, but um, it's super slow. Yeah, super super slow, and like they have to be a real pole dancer to like yeah, yeah. dance to it. But other than that, I'm not I'm not that too crazy when it comes to like like I don't know people people be having like songs where it's just like they have the whole crowd jumping and lit, and I'm just like yeah. I have mellow hype songs yeah. where like you can get hype with me. But I'm not just like, ah, yeah, you don't you have know. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can chill if you want to. You can dance if you want to. Like, I, I, I make borderline smoker music. Yeah. You know, like you could turn up to it if you want to, but it's a meant to be chill song. Yeah. Well, nowadays people can smoke and still be energetic. So yeah. you, you get the options of both worlds. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, And before we move into the last portion, which is all hypothetical questions, uh, this next question is probably the densest one in the interview. But, you know, we've talked a lot about your experience with music, the actions, the reactions, things like that. But when it's just you and the music one-on-one, what does music give back to you? Mm. Never really thought about that question because I always feel like I put into the music. Yeah. I feel like music, when it comes to my music, it's a reminder when it comes to my music and I'm listening to my own songs, my own verses, lyrics, it's a reminder to say that I can do this. Um, when I'm listening to others, um, it's a challenge. Um, even when I'm listening to big artist names too, like yeah. it's a challenge. Like even though I'm not on the same level as them, I know I can make a song just as good as these people. Mm-hmm. It's just that my version of how good this sounds may not sound radio and yeah. it, it'll still do what it's supposed to do for the artist. And so when I listen to music, cause somebody's somebody I've, I've explained this to somebody. I don't necessarily let music like, like tell my, like create my emotion. I don't let like when, when I go to listen, listen to music, I don't like to go in and say, oh, I'm sad. Let me go listen to some music to make me happy. Yeah. Or I don't say like, you know, I don't, I don't go into the I'm listening to music for that intent. I go in with the intent to learn. So I say it's a challenge for me because I like to break stuff down. I'm very, very intuitive when it comes to like going in, looking at the genius lyrics, looking at how they broke it down. Mm-hmm. I want to learn as much of like, as like if they had a rapper's glossary, I would most likely have it yeah. <laughs> just because like, well, actually that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I, I would, because I want to be able to understand like, how do you break your song down? Like, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how the fuck Tyler did uh, call me. If you get lost, <sighs> like I know it's yeah. a mixture between him and, you know, drum, you know, and the, you know how he did. Cause DJ drum is a great, he's a yeah. great, great DJ, great producer. No, I mean, that al- that, that album is, flawless, is phenomenal. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. It's just like, I want to know how to be able to do that. So like, yeah, of course I listen to music and I enjoy music, but every time I listen to music, I think like, like, like Tyler, for example, you know, Tyler is going to go and make a three part, a three part song. Mm-hmm. I want to know how he progresses and make it, how, how it sounds better every single time. Yeah. You know, he always, he, you can go across his, his catalog and see the similar, but the difference between all his albums mm-hmm. and the structures of how he does it. And it's just like, well, how do we do that? Like, how do I do that? How can I provide a sense of this type of creativity while making it my own type of creativity, not being replicated, Yeah, you know, what they do? Because even, even that is hard. Like, I listen to music 
so that I don't make sure I don't create the same thing that I just heard. Yeah. Because regardless whether or not, you know, we want to say that we write our own music, we're still influenced by the stuff that we hear around us. Always. With the cadence that we heard from one song or like the flow that we heard from another song, Mm -hmm. you may just take a little bit of that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of that. It's it's, going to happen by osmosis. Yeah. I, I, I feel like it's, going to happen it's inevitable for somebody to pick up a style yeah you just got to learn how to innovate it yourself and that's all i want to do is i want to learn how to innovate it take what somebody else did like um yeah copy the steps that work but don't copy the delivery exactly and so like well it's like uh, going back to going back to talking about how Lil wayne raps and me freestyling around like more now this time yeah i realized that you know at first i used to say i don't freestyle i don't like freestyle just that and third but being a Lil Wayne fan, I still have elements of freestyling yeah. in all of my music. Just because you, you, it's you have to appreciate it by default. Yeah, yeah, like, it's, it's subconscious. He's just so good at it. You you can't not like it to a degree. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I don't know. It's just it's just a way for me to be able to improve myself. Study. Um, like I said, I, it's not like I don't enjoy music at all. I love music, and I'm gonna go and enjoy music. Yeah. But it's more like since because I know that I want to create music. And I want to create something that I feel like people can vibe out to. Um, I'm not going to limit myself to, you know, my favorite rapper. Or, you yeah, know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and just know as much as possible. You know, it's one of the reasons why I say I'm I like I like all genres, um, even including country. <laughs> hey, I'm in the same boat. There, I mean, even including country, there are a handful of songs in there that actually that actually hit. Yeah, and so it's it's like. You you can create so many ideas off of being able to just listen and pay attention. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's kind of something. I I mean, yeah. You know, again, I don't know too too much of Tyler's story, but he's even touched on that. He's like touched upon like the how like you can find music in music, and like that's a big part. And I mean, mm-hmm. even going to something we were saying off camera, just to kind of like sum up more of what you were saying before, it's important to replicate the passion not the not the process so like i feel like your your approach to it you you are doing a lot of the things that he does just by putting out work like he he has constantly put out work but he's also told his story through his work Mm -hmm. so he has done this thing where like you get to watch him grow in life through the stories he tells in music so i think that's you know and you you said it yourself you're like i can't put out this album until i have a life moment to attach to it Mm -hmm. not a specific life moment you're you weren't like ah i gotta do this or i gotta do that but you said yourself you have to let life influence you before you can do this that is what he has always done he lets life influence him and then when he has enough influences in life he puts them out. He shares with the world the things he has learned through life. And that's why his music is the way it is. That's why it's so story-driven. That's why it's so comparative to reality, in a sense, versus just like boats and hoes. Mm-hmm. And so, like I said, in that respect, you are taking that approach, but you are not writing the style that he's writing. You're not writing the topics he's writing. You're not emulating his process. You're emulating his passion exactly and that i think is what you know curates the best experience in the end but not only the best experience in the end but the best experience along the way your journey has to be your own your journey has to be indicative of the actions that you're going to bring to everybody and you can only do it at the pace you do it there's no way you can make it just like his or just like wayne's or just like anybody's you can only do it in your own so I think that, you know, in, in that respect, you were definitely you were definitely on the right path because you were exactly where you need to be at all times because you continue to do it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but with that being said, we're going to go ahead and move on to some hypothetical questions. Okay. And for these, sky's the limits. The questions are all made up, so mm-hmm. the answers are allowed to as well. But because we are getting a little long in the interview and for the viewers at home, let's try and run through these a little more tight. Um, but this first one's pretty straightforward. If you could work with any one person... The only requirement is they have to be alive. <laughs> yep, it gets everybody every time. Who would you want to work with and how would you want to work with them? Oh, dang, that's hard, man. Dang, that's hard because, you know, I'm going to just throw it out there. If I could work with anybody in the world, Mac Miller. Mac Miller. He no, wait. Of, he, he, but he's has not to alive. Be alive. Yeah, yeah. Not alive. Yeah, yeah. I would say, because I feel like I would want to work with Wayne during his prime. So, DJ Drama. Ooh, good answer. 
Hell yeah. They did drama. Hell yeah. I, with me being concept, he makes yeah. he makes an album that I can make a story and a concept. Mm-hmm. You, you look at the uh, DiCaprio, uh, DiCaprio too, the DiCaprio story. Mm-hmm. You have all of uh, dedications. You have <laughs> Tyler's album. Yeah, this dude is phenomenal. Or I could even, oh man, it's kind of iffy. It's kind of iffy. But um, um, what's his name? Um, DJ Khaled, because he has some of the best. Like he brings all like a lot of artists together. Yeah, and like one thing about me, I love collaboration. Yeah, no, I mean that. <laughs> that is definitely the guy to talk to if you want to do that then that is his whole bag yeah no but i mean those are both actually two really cool answers that i've never gotten before mm-hmm. um and then subsequently who is a local artist that you're aware of that you haven't gotten to connect with yet but you would like to well that's art because I've, I've worked with a couple of people um i don't know if he's still local um hamza Oh, damn. The guy that made yeah. the song breathe. Um, Hamza, I think he's phenomenal with his wordplay. Very intelligent. Mm-hmm. He knows he knows how to talk. Yeah. And so therefore, and he knows how to like he knows how to talk and he knows how to process his thoughts really fast. Yeah. And that makes him a phenomenal freestyle mm-hmm. freestyler. And then the concepts in which his music holds, great. Hell yeah. Okay, you can't you can't find great music like that in the city um i mean you can yeah unless you like look to you know yeah like to the to the level of like it seems like he just he just gets up and just like okay let me just let's go rap yeah yeah. it feels like he just does that yeah there's a different type of aptitude which like just not everybody can have right yeah um him or um i'm gonna list two other people lord lawrence Oh, I shout out Lord dude. Lawrence. He's great energy. Mm-hmm. I love to d- work with him because I want to do a rock. Like, I want to step into, like, the rock genre. Mm-hmm. Um, even more, I just love his energy. I don't even have to do a rock song. We can do whatever. Yeah. I can do a fucking pop song with him, and I I think I'll be satisfied. Or Fig. Oh, yeah. Shout out Fig. As that dude's interesting. I just, yeah. he's just great energy. I love, he's so fun. And I don't know, it's just... Being around Antelope Fisherman because I've been on a couple of their shows. Yo, shout out the fish. Um, uh, the uh, Young Game, mm-hmm. the cast that I used to manage. Cool people, great lyricists, the whole group, great, great group. Yeah. Um, I Fig- think they carried themselves very well. Yeah. Fig's tuned in episode was actually really fun. If you yeah. get a chance, I'm 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 putting it here. <laughs> Shameless plug, y'all. Uh, his episode was really good. You should go check it out. It it breaks down his most recent album. Yeah, yeah. So those those are amongst a few people that I feel like I've really just been paying attention to. Um, I've worked with them already, but Twan is always going to be one of my. Oh, favorite shout albums. out Twan. I, yeah, I, I support that dude anytime. Um, pretty sure by the time this came out his episode will have come out too so if y'all haven't seen that yet check that one out as well yeah he um, we had us we have a couple of tracks that um, I want to get him on Um, you know time we we just gotta find the right time for everything but cool cat very very intelligent got that southern that southern hospitality that southern that southern essence that oh delightful individual big big fan really needed in here you know I, I feel like it's hard to find great Southern folks. You got Twan, you have Julian Outlaw. Oh, shout out Julian Outlaw. Um, yeah. Sote. I don't know if you know Sote. She's from Louisiana. I don't know. Yeah. Everybody at her in the comments. Let's get her on the show. <laughs> get Sote here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, I feel like amongst, you know, those few people, Twan, those those three right there, Julian, Twan, and Sote. Oh, yeah. I love them. They really know how to bring that Southern, that Southern you know, tang, and it really just keeps uh, keeps the scene refreshed out here. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. Well, those are all awesome. Actually, everybody at all of them in the comments. Let's see if we can make <laughs> something happen. I just name-dropped a lot of people yeah. here. <laughs> um, and then for this next one, like I said before, sky's the limits, and it's pretty literal in this sense. But if you could perform anywhere in the world... And you wouldn't have to worry about crowd access or building stability or power. It was guaranteed the best lineup, guaranteed the best show. And it doesn't have to be a venue. It could be anywhere. Where would you want to perform? Take me overseas. Go to Bali or something. Okay. Go to a party party place. You know, places where they actually know how to get down. Now, I could say that personally, because I want to step into... um, because I want to step into like more house EDM and stuff like mm-hmm. that. 
I would want to perform out of the country anywhere. Like Ibiza? Like Ibiza or Ibiza, freaking, um, what's that place? Um, Iceland. Mm. I know they have some pretty sick EDM shows out there. Yeah. I would love to just go like my my biggest dream is to like be one of those guys that has like the the five deck controller. <laughs> yep. And I'm standing in front of a big screen and I'm just like a black silhouette and there's like all these lights going on. And, like, <laughs> and I'm just up there and all you see is the silhouette of me just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I, I mean, any of those options would be rad for sure. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I, I, I personally don't see much of a performing career like i'm gonna forever be a rapper artist performer yeah. but i don't see myself stepping on stage to perform much unless it's something very intentionful okay like intentionful like more than 20 minutes like i really want to like get into being able to perform more than 20 minutes yeah that's one thing i do kind of struggle with especially since i have to learn my music um more because i freestyle all my stuff <laughs> I got the case of the Lil Wayne, uh, the Lil Wayne's. Uh, I, I freestyled my song, so yeah, I have a hard time. I don't remember what I bro. said. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like learning my song like 10 minutes before I have to be on stage. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I can fully understand um, that. But um, I don't feel like I want to continue to um, perform a lot just because I want my performances to be truly an exclusive moment. So yeah. like I want to host house shows where it's just like, People come up to party and then I'm the main act. And yeah. I get 20 minutes of performing and people are in the house going wild because they're at a house show and a party and yeah. don't have to worry about, you know, all these. Or or it's like it's like um like a summer event where it's just like a bunch of like a festival. Yeah. Like I would I would do a festival or I would do like something where I'm doing more than 20 minutes, but I I I don't know. I just, I just, it's hard to really just put myself in the place to like just be on regular lineups. And yeah. I feel like even so thinking of like, um, like going to a, like a YG or Lil Wayne show and being an opener or something like that. Like, I feel like I'm starting to understand. Yeah. Being an opener and getting that exposure helps you a little bit um, as um, for your momentum, especially doing it for big artists or whatnot. But if you can create a platform for yourself to where you you're not, oh, I remember him performing before Lil Wayne. Yeah, I feel like that makes you a little bit more impactful. And Very so much. That's so. why I say I don't I don't know how much how much like how much I want to be able to perform. You know my rap stuff, my music stuff, because I feel like when I start DJing the way that I want to DJ, that's gonna be. I, I yeah, love it's gonna sound, take so off in its own way too. It's gonna yeah. do. It's gonna do what I want to do, and that by that case, like I said, take me to Iceland or Ibiza where I can just hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, I love that. So, I don't know. Um, but with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping this up. Awesome. Uh, what can we look forward to between now and the end of the year? Um, I will drop an album. I'm going to change the name of it probably two more times. So, don't expect the name pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be restructuring the uh, exhibition series. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's my showcase series. Like I said, I want to be able to try something different with the approach of how I'm able to showcase these talents. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also I'm going to just start DJing more. Um, I want to be able to create my own sound, um, in terms of like, like house and EDM and stuff. Yeah. And I want to be able to like create a vibe so people can be able to like actually enjoy themselves out in public and not just, you know, expect me rapping or expecting somebody else rapping all yeah. night. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hell yeah. So well, definitely looking forward to all of that. Uh, for the next one, go and look straight at the camera. Tell everybody how they can find you. You can find me basically anywhere, Moody Packs. Um, my Instagram is Love Is Packs, L U V I S P A X. Um, Twitter, Love Is Packs, L U V I S P A X. Um, Moody Packs on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, everywhere. I'm not that hard to find. Hell yeah. And then uh, any other plugs, any other shout outs, anybody else you want to put on while you're on here? Mm. Shout out my moms. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I just, I, I shout out to all the homies. Um, best friend, David. Um, he's moved here from Texas with me and he's, nice. uh, he's been ongoing with support. Um, literally, I mean, I can tell him, hey, I need you to come record. All right, let me go get my camera. Yeah. It's nothing. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, he's 
always down for a feature. He's just kind of like my ride or die best friend. You know, he just, he's always there and like hypes me up, encourages me and makes me feel like I'm, I can do something more than what it is that I have been doing. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, shout out David. Um, and then with that being said, we've got one last question to go. But before we do, I'm going to steal the camera for just a second. Okay. <laughs> As always, y'all, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And one more shout out to the Brothers Apothecary and Ronald Records. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. Guarantee you're going to like them. And with that being said, the final question. And this is entirely up to your interpretation. But what is an album you feel is more on the obscure side? So it's a deep cut. It's one not a lot of people would know. But it's one you think everybody should know. <laughs> Team Kendrick, C4. Hell yeah. You know about that album? I, I feel like somebody else has said that on the show. Don't quote me on that. Kendrick Lamar, C4 is a reincarnation of the Carter Three. This is oh. Lamar's take on the Carter Three. Interesting. Yep. Damn, I do not know that. And Maybe on somebody that said album, there is a special unreleased verse from Wayne. Ooh. I don't remember the song, but... Oh, you'll have to listen to it to find out. If you're, if you're truly a Kendrick fan, and this is why... This is why, you know, I'm going to be a little bit <laughs> ignorant on the situation with the whole Drake. This is why I knew Kendrick was going to win the whole Drake-Kendrick beef anyways. <laughs> But because I knew from the start how great of a lyricist he was. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. I liked Drake before nothing was the same. Mm -hmm. After that, nothing was the same. <laughs> I'm on the nose. <laughs> um, but Kendrick Lamar, because this was before uh, Section 80, he dropped C4. Mm -hmm. And, you know, me being a huge Wayne fan and me... Figuring out because one of Kendrick Lamar's biggest songs was High Power, produced by J. J. Cole. Yeah. So, you know, that was his biggest hyped song. And then I heard about this C4 album. I go and listen to it. And this man is basically at the caliber of what Lil Wayne was spinning at. I think he was like anywhere between 16 and 20 years old. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know yeah. his exact age, but he was at that age rapping the way that Lil Wayne was. I want to. I'm 26 right now. I still haven't even reached my peak of being able to rap like that. <laughs> Fair, yeah, you know, me neither. I'm, I'm like, you know what? Kendrick is maybe like 30 something now, mm -hmm. and so like, what? I'm almost. I'm on. I'm only 10 years under him. Yeah, and for him to do something like that around the same age that I was starting to rap, mm -hmm. that's phenomenal. Yeah, and I feel like anybody should sit down and just like front to end listen to it. Hell yeah. Oh, well, it's a solid wreck. And I mean, I, I, like I said, I'm not super familiar with it, so I'm definitely going to check it out. Oh, so I appreciate that. I don't know where, I don't know where it said either. It's, I, I found it in the cut of Tumblr when it was, uh, well, I mean, like popular. If it's on the internet, it'll be, yeah, on it'll be, it should be on the <laughs> internet, but this is when Tumblr was like popping off yeah. and it's thing. everybody, I, I had, I remember the time too, I, I had like 250,000 followers on Tumblr. I was Tumblr famous and then I had to delete my Tumblr. I got in trouble for smoking mm -hmm. weed. <laughs> Damn. Um, but around the time um, I had made a new one and I had, that's when I found out about the C4 album and I was just like yo because this was also around the time where um, this was before or after Macadel no before Faces by Mac Miller hmm. um, yeah yeah was around that time, yeah. And then Joey Badass had just dropped um, 1999, I believe, or Summer Nights, one of the two. Mm -hmm. But that was just the time to be alive for music. And Hell yeah. I don't know. It's just... Well, hey, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get back to this. <laughs> sure. Classic shit, man. That's when yeah. everybody was just talking about getting waves and... Yeah. I don't know. It's running from the cops because they were smoking weed. <laughs> I guess that's harder to do now because it's legal in most places. But yeah, I get you. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And this has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. I'm Moody Pex. And we're signing off later, y'all. That's a wrap. This is not a podcast. This is a show. Keep 
jamming.